Istanbul by AG. This is a Euro game uh, that represents the struggle of some merchants in old Istanbul to become rich, to become richer than their opponents and to acquire rubies. That is the ultimate goal of every merchant in Istanbul. So what you do, like in most Euro games, is you use resources to gain more resources and then you gain more resources that allow, and that allows you to gain more resources and that allows you to gain the target resource. The first player to collect enough target resources is the winner. From this description, it may not sound very exciting, it may sound like a lot of other games out there, uh, but of course the point uh, in gaming, like in everything, is not to reinvent the wheel, but to use ideas that are out there in an original way, which I believe Istanbul does. So definitely there are a couple of original ideas here. So without further ado, let me show you how the game plays so that you can get a better sense of what Istanbul has to offer, uh, in what sense uh, has certain elements of traditional Euro gaming, and what are the things in here that you do not see every day. Here's the board of the game, which is made of 16 tiles, each representing a different location. And the tiles can be arranged in different configurations from game to game. There are configurations that are more friendly to beginners and will result in shorter gameplay time. Other ones that are more challenging for expert players. It is nice that you can build the board in different ways from game to game. Each player starts the game with a wheelbarrow, which is this display here, which is used to represent the goods that the player owns and is bring, carrying around. You move these cubes to indicate the number of goods of each type that you have. When you spend a good, you move the corresponding cube to the left. When you acquire a good, you move it to the right. And there are ways of filling up this gap by purchasing extensions to your wheelbarrow, in which case the wheelbarrow will be able to carry more stuff for you, which is good. Also you start with some Lira, Lira is the currency in the game. You also have a moving piece on the board, or I should say pieces. Your cart or your merchant in the game is represented by a disc, a wooden disc with an illustration on it, placed on top of a pile of generic discs. The Desk on top is you, pretty much, and these guys are your assistants. Now, during your turn, you will always have to move. When it is your turn, you need to move your merchant by one or two spaces on the board. And you cannot end movement in the same area where you started. You cannot move orthogonally, and here's what's interesting about movement. When you're moving, you are if you're moving with the assistance under you, when you reach an area where there are no assistants of yours, you drop an assistant there. That would be a move, then I would be moving there. Boom, and I dropped another assistant. If I move in an area in which I do have an assistant, then the assistant is reabsorbed into my stack. The basic idea is that if you are moving around the board and you dropped off an assistant or you picked up an assistant, then you can interact with the place in which you are, which is what you're trying to do, to get benefits from the locations. If you end up uh, in a space where you do not have assistance, you haven't dropped off assistance, you haven't picked up assistance, then your turn ends immediately. You cannot get benefits from the location in which you are. Occasionally there will also be encounters, if you encounter another merchant, if you enter an area where another merchant is, you have to pay 3 liras to that merchant. You may be in the same area with this uh, pawn here, which represents the governor. If you're in the area with the governor, you can, but do not have to interact with him and that will allow you to gain a bonus card. Bonus cards are drawn from this deck and will grant you several types of benefits indicated by these cryptic icons. Nah, they're not very cryptic ones. You learn what they mean. If you use the governor you can draw a card from this deck but then you also have either to pay two liras or to um, discard another bonus card that you have in your hand. Something similar happens if you're interacting with the smuggler, which is this other pawn here. If you do so, you can take a good, good, uh, goods, remember, are 
these things here on your wheelbarrow, you can take a good of any kind, but in that case you have to give back one good or pay two lira. If you interact with the smuggler or the governor, then you roll dice to relocate the smuggler or the governor randomly. There's another type of encounter which is with families. Each player also has a cylinder like this one indicating the family, family members of that player. If you encounter family members of another player then you send them to the police station which is this uh, this area here and you gain 3 lira. So there are some encounters that you may have but the basic uh, action is to move, uh, dropping off assistance, uh, picking up assistance and to interact with the locations in which you are. What you're trying to do is to interact with the locations, to make money and to gain resources that will allow you to acquire rubies. This is how you win the game. The first player to acquire 5 rubies is the winner. If you're playing with 2 players then it is 6 rubies. This is it. This is the game, okay? We can wrap it up here. Review is over. Kind of, sort of, well. if. If you're happy with this, this is what the game is about. It gets more interesting, also a little more complicated to explain, uh, because the game is about the locations, about how you use the locations and what the locations can do to you. So, uh, when you are uh, teaching the game, uh, it may get a little confusing at the beginning for players when uh, they have to learn what the locations can do. But I realized that it seemed daunting to me when I was learning the game reading rulebook. It felt daunting when I was teaching it and then after two turns everybody was feeling comfortable and playing the game and interacting with the locations wasn't a problem at all. Now, that location there if you spend 7 liras, you can purchase an extension for your wheelbarrow and you place it on your wheelbarrow. Uh, if you purchase 3 of them, that means if you fill up your wheelbarrow to its maximum capacity with extensions, you get a free ruby. And that's one of the ways in which you acquire rubies. So actually at the beginning of the game you also place rubies there, one per player. Here, the fabric warehouse, you acquire fabric resources, the red resource, the red good. So that means that you move your red cube up to the rightmost space on your track, corresponding track on your wheelbarrow. The same happens here for spices, at the spice warehouse you load up on spices. And there is a third warehouse, which is the fruit warehouse, where you load up on on fruit, on pineapples pretty much. Post office, this is a cool one. When you end up here you can acquire the resources indicated on the in the open squares. In this case it would be these two goods and two liras. After you get those resources you move the leftmost cube on the tile down. The next player, therefore, following the rule that they get uh, the resources indicated in the free squares who get a red, a yellow resource and two uh, liras and we'll continue like this. So that means that the resources generated by the post office will change from turn to turn. Caravan Saray is where if you interact with the location you can pick up bonus cards. If you are interacting with the location using your main action for the turn you draw two cards, you choose the one you want to keep and you uh, discard the other ones that one. The fountain is where you can recollect all of your assistants. The action of the place is simply to summon back all of your assistants that have been left around the board and you put them under your merchant token again. The black market. In the black market you can get any one of those resources, red, green or yellow, and then you roll two dice and you, if you roll seven or more, you acquire the indicated the, a number of blue resources or rings. With seven and eight you get one, nine or ten you get two, eleven or twelve you get three. Since we're talking about rolling dice, here's more rolling dice and this time gambling at the tea house. If you're here, you use that, the action of the location, you name a number between 3 and 12, you roll two dice. If you roll that number higher than that, you gain the corresponding number that you, um, that you named in liras. 
I chose seven, I rolled seven or more against seven liras, which means the higher you name a number, um, the less chances you have of winning anything, but if you win, you win big because you get higher amounts of money. If you fail, if you don't roll high enough, then at least get a consolation prize, which is a two liras. The large market and the small market, they work in similar ways. When you get here, you simply sell goods from your wheelbarrow, so you will move your cubes to adjust, depending on the goods that you're selling. The top card on the stack in the market that you are trying to use will tell you the goods that are being sought after in that market. So for example here people are looking for a fruit, two ring and two spices, I mean two fabric resources. If I'm able to sell three of these resources, for example, then I will get 12 liras. If I'm able to sell all five, I will get 25 liras. The small market, you get um, lower prices, but this is where you go to sell the stuff that, that you have on your wheelbarrow. After you sell resources uh, in, in the market, you remove the top card, and then there will be another card that will indicate the goods that are now being sought after at the, uh, at the market. If your family token is in the police station when you land there and you use the action of the location, then you can free the token, you send it anywhere on the board, and you get to activate the action of the location where you're sending the family member. However, remember, if you send it close to other players, they may be tempted to catch it and send it back to the police station for money, so you give them money. On the other hand, uh, that means that the family member is again available for you to send it somewhere on the board, which may be profitable because you may send the family member to locations that are far and would otherwise be difficult for you to go to. The Sultan's place, uh, where rubies are handed out uh, like they're candies, uh, kind of, because you still have to pay for those. Um, but some of the rubies are not too expensive, especially early on in the game. To get a ruby from the Sultan's place, you need to pay the resources indicated in the open spaces of the track. So to get the first ruby in a four players uh, game, because uh, the number of rubies that you place on the track changes the number of players, well, in this case, to get the first ruby, I need to pay these resources. I pay them from my wheelbarrow, I grab the ruby, I place it on my wheelbarrow, hooray! And as you can see, there is an extra area that is open. That means that the next ruby will be more expensive because the next player or myself. In any case, the next player, the, the next person who tries to get a ruby from there will have to pay uh, the cost indicated in all of the empty slots, then that is paid for, and voila. And so the price of the rubies can, keeps increasing. Jumping to the opposite side of this row here, we have the gemstone dealer, which works pretty much the same as the Sultan's Palace, but with money. You pay the cost of the last open space on the track. So to purchase that ruby will cost me 14. After I purchase it, the next ruby will be 15, and the next one will be 16, and so on and so forth. Great Mosque and Small Mosque. These are a little tricky, more tiles with more icons to learn. The basic idea is that you can purchase tiles here by using your resources from the wheelbarrow, for example, to acquire this style, I need to have two uh, red resources, two red goods on my uh, wheelbarrow, and I need to pay one, to spend one. You do not have to spend them all. You need to show that you have two, and then you spend one, and you grab the corresponding tile, then in the stack you will have the cost of the next tile. This tile will grant you an advantage, all of the tiles that you get in the mosques give you advantages. For example, this tile allows you to uh, turn a die that you rolled to a 4 or to re-roll two dice. This can be very useful if you are uh, gambling at the tea house. 
What is also good is that if you get both tiles from a mosque, so if you get these two ones or these two ones, you get a ruby. You get a ruby for each pair of tiles that you get from each mosque. So you get benefits and some of these are really good. Here, for example, you get the fifth uh, assistant in your stack. Here you get the ability of summoning an assistant from anyone on the board by paying two liras. Good stuff and also good because they give you rubies. We already talked about the gemstone dealer and so we talked about the main concepts in the game. Uh, I just didn't go through all of the effects of the bonus cards because I guess that that would be uh, would make this review too long and with too many rules but this is how the game works. Move around, drop off assistance, pick up assistance, uh, interact pretty much indirectly with other players by stealing stuff, well by purchasing stuff that will make further purchases more expensive, by grabbing money that the family members of the opponent will generate, by trying not to give the opponents too much money by going in the same areas in which they are, move around, interact with the locations, maximize your profits and try to grab the required amount of rubies to win the game before the other players do. This is not the type of game that I play all that often and frankly as I was reading the rule book I was a little skeptical. I did not think that I would enjoy it. Definitely not as much as I did. Because I did enjoy it. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I was very uh, surprised of how much fun I was having as the game was progressing. Um, the idea of dropping off and picking up the assistant uh, really give this, gives this game a tactical quality. You have to think spatially. It's not just about crunching numbers. I guess that that's one of the problems that I have with some Euro games when it gets too much about uh, just adding numbers and maximizing numbers. Um, I, I'm just bored. That's not my thing. But here, when you have to combine an economic aspect with a spatial aspect, uh, still pretty basic, of course, it's not much more complicated than, I don't know, ch that, that checkers in terms of movement, uh, but it does add quality to the game, it does add flavor and personality, because, of course, you have to figure out what you want to do and how to combine that with with the movement options that you still have and when and you have to figure out when it may be the right time to take an action which is not very profitable but sets you up to be able to exploit a better action next and the spatial aspects of the game to me is a really really a really key uh, the family members your own and that of the opponents that spatial you i would like to go to a certain um, to send a family member to a certain location because it's great, but I may be giving an advantage to another opponent. I would say that probably there is this, this tension here, or maybe balance is a better word. This is a pretty nice balance between the spatial aspects before the idea of moving around, of reaching areas, of maximizing your position on the board, your physical position on the board, and the resources that you acquire the chains of resources that you acquire, uh, the chains of actions, because of course doing certain things in a certain order is more profitable. If you get from the moss the tile that allows you to reroll dice, then going to the tea house and gambling is much better. If you acquire a lot of money, then there are certain things that may be good to may be good to acquire earlier rather than later. I really like that other aspect that um, there are things on the game that change uh, throughout the game, and that brings a certain degree of indirect interaction. Uh, I'm purchasing a ruby and then another one, now the price of the remaining ones is higher, the other players will have a disadvantage of that, but it's certainly not as confrontational as you have in other games, you don't feel like you're really stabbing people in the back or stuff like that, even building roads in settlers in such a way that prevents the opponent from building other roads, I've seen that that can cause some attrition, can cause some tension, um, not here. There is that interaction, which is a factor, which is pretty interesting, but uh, doesn't really ruin, spoil the mood around the table. This is a really 
nice game. It's such a, a terse design, such an elegant design. Elegance is not a word that I th thought I would use in the um, in the review of this game when I was reading the rules because the, the uh, rules made the game sound very fiddly. Just, oh my gosh, there is just a different rule for every little single thing. And then, yeah, as I played the game, things started clicking together. When those locations that just look like a list of abstract things in the rule book feel like actual locations, like resources that you can use, they get connected to one another. You see how the effects of one location may give an advantage that is maximized by another location that will set you up to benefit from another location. Then everything comes together and the game feels very organic. Uh, very uh, smooth, it plays well. So Istanbul, in conclusion, this is a game that looks good, the components are really nice and, and, and the tiles are very durable, replay value enormous thanks to the different configurations that you can have on the board, on the possibility that you have to reshape uh, the board anytime you play. Uh, tricky to teach because the players may feel discouraged, may feel like there's too much stuff to learn, but incredibly smooth, incredibly intuitive. That's that's really the word that I was looking for. It's an intuitive game once you start playing it. I'm absolutely impressed. I may not play many Euro games, not nearly as many as many games of this type I play as, for example, I play war games or combat games, action games, adventure games. When it comes to this type of clean, uh, semi-asset design, I'm not that strong of a player, meaning I, I don't play these games that often, but when I do, I can appreciate a good one when I come across one, and this, I believe, belongs to the category. Definitely a game that I enjoyed very much, definitely a game that I'm going to bring to game nights, because with the right group, this is a game that really can shine. Fun game, Istanbul by AEG, surprisingly good, especially for somebody who is not a regular Euro gamer such as myself.